What's up, guys? Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Welcome back. So today I'm finally going to be updating an old video of mine, which was basically, you know, how do you export from GarageBand and get the proper level? Um, and then also I'm going to be addressing a question that I get a lot, which is why is it that inside of GarageBand it sounds awesome, but then when I export it, it sounds totally different. Um, so, you know, there's a couple of techniques that you should be aware of if you're having those kinds of problems. And that's what we're going to talk about today. As the example, I'm using a project from a client of mine, Tom, what's up? Um, this is a guy that sends me lots of projects to mix and I like them all. And um, don't forget, I do mix GarageBand projects for you guys. Check out my website, garagebandandbeyond.com. Uh, there's a mixing inquiries page over there. And also really quickly, I'm just gonna add that I just started offering a mastering service or a fake mastering service. And I use the term, I use the term fake mastering because I'm not in a mastering house. I don't have mastering speakers. I'm, you know, just here in my, my studio, but I can help you get your songs up to that proper final level. So they do match professional recording levels. And so you don't have to turn it up when it comes across your playlist. You know what I mean? Um, $25 a song, super cheap. I have a bunch of really nice programs to, you know, help your mixes get to that level. Email me at garagebandandbeyond at gmail.com and we'll talk about it. Okay, enough of that crap. So <laughs> let's look at this project. So when I push play, what I really want you to take uh, take a notice of is that here on along the left-hand side of the screen, all the levels here, you should notice that none of them are even close to the red, right? So nothing is distorting. And that is one of the major tricks or secrets techniques to getting your mixes to the a the right level you know just because you're turning it up inside of here and you see a lot of red is not going to help your final mix level it's, it's going to work against you so um and then also pay attention the master level down at the bottom same thing not even close to the red on this particular mix so let's 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 take a look i'll shut up for a second let's listen pay attention all those levels let's listen here we go Okay, that should have been enough for you to get the idea. So let's go and look exactly here at this kick drum uh, because the kick drum and the snare drum is a very good example because it's one of the hardest signals to sort of control it properly. So what I like to use uh, in, in for kick drums, especially in this particular case, I'm using the PSP Vintage Warmer 2. I do have a video on this plugin. I freaking love this plugin. I highly recommend it. It is very useful. It does a lot of different things and it is just awesome, totally awesome. So in this case, what I'm using it for uh, primarily is for as a limiter, right? So here, as you can see, um, I have it set up so it is doing the brick wall limiting and I have it set to negative 2.57 dB. So essentially what that means is nothing will go above negative 2.57 dB. If, you know, if I was to do that, then things get into the red and that is what I'm desperately trying to avoid when I mix, right? Um, so using a limiter, it doesn't necessarily have to be the PSP Vintage Warmer. There are limiters inside of GarageBand. So you want to make sure that, you know, if you have signals that you're having a hard time controlling, either with compression or whatever, a limiter is a great thing to use. And it just sort of says, bam, that's it. That's the limit and nothing else. It's a really easy way to get these things right. Um, so that's, you know, that's really the trick here. Nothing goes into the red. Nothing is distorting. You're managing your gain structure properly. One of the nice analogies that engineers like to use is, you know, like a, a, a water line with a bunch of different valves in on, on it. So if you have like, you know, you have everything is nice and controlled, but then you get up to one valve where something is, you know, it's like closed a little bit more, the water starts backing up behind it, and it starts damming up and pressure builds up and then it spits it out through that valve in a very, you know, forceful way. And so that is kind of what's going on with your audio signal. If you have, you know, a lot of distortion and a lot of red stuff going on in your levels, in your meters rather, if you see a lot of red, you know that something's wrong. And so you just desperately want to avoid that. Now, 
that is pretty much the big secret. That It's really simple. The other things to pay attention to, though, are EQing and compression, of course, and effects, too. You never want to go, like, really overboard with EQ. You know, if you have, like, a huge EQ change happening somewhere, don't do it. Trust me. It will sound totally weird on the outside of GarageBand or whatever DAW you're working on. Um, you really do have to be careful about doing big, big, dramatic moves with your EQs and your compressors. Everything should be, you know, all things in moderation, right? <laughs> that definitely applies to mixing. So as long as you can keep those, you know, few things in mind, your overall mix will sound exactly like it does inside of GarageBand, right? When you export it, it'll sound just like it does in GarageBand. Now, the second section of this, second part of this video is boosting the overall level, right? Now, what I'm going to show you is what I like to do, what I use to do this. And I'm talking about this guy right here, which is the T-Rex CS program. I think it's like Custom Shop or something. This is from IK Multimedia. Um, this is one of the main things that I use for, you know, my fake mastering uh, service. I have a few other programs that I use, but we're gonna, not going to talk about those today. Um, but this is one of my favorite things to use. And so let me just push play here so you can automatically, you'll hear a difference. Here we go. Oops. Where are we? <laughs> we're at the end of the song. Let's go to the beginning of the song. Right, so you should be able to hear it's it's a little bit brighter, the the low end's a little bit tighter, but overall the volume is up. And and I didn't like do anything magical in the production of this video. It is this plugin, and hopefully you could hear the difference. Um, but I do highly recommend the T-Rex CS uh, mastering program from IK Multimedia. It is super versatile. It has a lot of stuff, a lot of different, really great presets in it. Um, but this is one of those things that I like to use. Now, if you don't have this, you can basically do what I did, you know, address in my old GarageBand video about this, the, the video I'm updating, which is basically you export everything from GarageBand here, and then you end up with your .aiff file. And let's talk about that, actually. When you do export, right, you want to come here and make sure that it's not compressed, right? You deselect that. So what happens is it comes out as an uncompressed file. You end up with a .aiff file. So then you grab that .aiff file and you bring it back into GarageBand. And that's when you start using the master track, right? The mastering track down here at the bottom. Um, this is sort of GarageBand's version of that. But you have to export it first. Then you bring that final mix down back into GarageBand, a new GarageBand track, new GarageBand file rather, and then you can master out of GarageBand using its presets. Now, the GarageBand mastering thing is pretty limited and it, I'm not a humongous fan of it, but you know, I have heard people get really decent results with it. I just like the IK Multimedia one a lot better. Um, and don't forget, you can send your projects to me and I will just use my IK Multimedia and a few other things, a few little secrets that I have here in my studio that I don't, you know, my own personal secrets. So, um, but anyway, that's it, you guys. So just remember everything in moderation, absolutely nothing clipping anywhere inside the plugins, inside your EQs, inside your compressors, nothing is getting into the red. And that is pretty much it. Manage your gain structure properly and you will be totally fine. Okay. If you have any questions, please leave comments below. I get to them as fast as possible. I got a lot of videos, a lot of questions to answer, but yeah. And always Facebook page. We are discussing this stuff on the Facebook page all the time. And uh, I hope you guys join us over there and on Twitter and all that junk. So you guys have a great day. I hope this was helpful for you. Good luck. Talk to you soon. Bye.